Amazon Prime have just launched season two of a documentary series with Elon Musk, unraveling the dark truths behind the Olympic Games. And now I, Elon Musk, will tell you some more about what's going on in the heart of international sports. And it's not only Amazon. Netflix even released a documentary series, Olympics Has Fallen, dedicated to corruption in the IOC. Seem a bit weird to you? Me too. Hey, Kai here. In this series, I'll be bringing you all that's going on in the cyber world around Paris 2024. There's no question that the Olympic Games are the biggest sporting event in the world, making them a huge gateway for cheats and hackers intent on exerting malicious influence. Hundreds of athletes have been in training for years. So have the hackers. Disinformation and deep fakes targeting the games kicked off last summer, and I've been building an expert team who will help us compete. But first, don't forget to subscribe. You won't want to miss any of the attacks or the counterattacks. The Hacker Games are on. Two fake documentary series appeared on the internet, spreading misinformation about the Olympics. Hi everyone, it's me, Tom Cruise, the actor. The first is narrated by a deep fake of Tom Cruise. In this series, you will discover the inner workings of the global sports industry. In the second season, it was Elon Musk's turn. Obviously, the film's there to damage the IOC's reputation. AI voices, special effects, and even a publicity campaign are all fake. But this is just a taster of what's to come, and it shows how fast this technology is improving. The video clearly signaled the content creators committed considerable time to the project and demonstrated more skill than most influence campaigns we observe, said Microsoft's Threat Analysis Center. The cyber stage is set. To break down the action, we'll be joined by cybersecurity pros. Our first guest is Yulia, VP of Global Government Affairs. Hi, Yulia. Good to have you on. Hi. Thank you for having me. Yulia, in your role, you talk to government officials from around the world. In their minds, how big an issue are deepfakes? It's really, it's really big. Uh, you even can check uh, World Economic Forum cyber risk uh, report for 2024. And uh, deep fakes uh, are seen as the top threat. Why are they such a popular tool in misinformation? It has become a popular tool because it became affordable. Uh, before, it was uh, resource-heavy and uh, to create uh, a realistic video uh, required uh, a lot of professional skills, resources, computer graphics. Right now, it's uh, automated. What's the purpose of it? You know, what are they trying to achieve? The, the most common scenario nowadays is that the fakes are, are used in uh, pornography. And uh, uh, at the same time, we see uh, in our industry, in cybersecurity industry, we see that cyber criminals are using audio deepfakes and uh, video deepfakes trying to lure users into downloading malware or giving away credentials. That's why the fact itself is pretty uh, worrisome. Thanks. Interesting. Now let's turn to Vladislav Tushkinov for some technical analysis. Vlad is a top data scientist at Kaspersky. Oh, which camera? <laughs> we'll get there. Don't worry about AI taking over the world. First, let me figure out how to run this studio. But trust me, there is an actual danger here. Hi, Vladislav. Vlad, tell us, how did they make deepfake Elon Musk? There are many ways to create synthetic media featuring a person, but we'll focus on the canonical deepfake. This involves taking a video of a person who will call the source and replacing the face with that of another person, the target. For example, Elon Musk. First of all, you need data. To create a deepfake, you film a source video and then you gather as many videos of pictures of the target person as possible, which is straightforward if the target is a celebrity. You then pass this data to the deepfake system. From a technical perspective, these deepfake systems are essentially a collection of algorithms. An object detection algorithm, such as a neural network, locates the faces in each frame of the videos and extracts rectangles containing them. 
These rectangles, basically portraits of the two people, are used to train a neural network called an autoencoder. This autoencoder has one encoder and two decoders, one for the source phase and one for the target phase. The encoder compresses the phase into a series of numbers, which are called a latent vector, and the decoders reconstruct the phases from this latent vector. Now, here's the neat part. The latent vector obtained from the source phase is decoded using the target decoder. This means the system decodes the source's facial expressions using the target's facial features, creating substitute face frames. These frames with the target's face are then put back into the video and blended using more algorithms. Voila, you have a deep fake. Of course, if there's a voice, you should create a fake voice as well, using roughly the same procedure. Thanks for the cool breakdown, Vlad. Even I'm amazed by how fast this tech is changing. You should have seen me six months ago. Back to the action. What do you think, Yulia? With only 10 days till the opening ceremony, what should we expect next? As usual in the history, uh, big events with a big audience uh, attract uh, criminals of all uh, sorts and kinds, uh, include cyber criminals. Will we see more deep fakes? I, I'm not sure, to be honest. Definitely the fact that uh, deep fakes were used for um, uh, Olympics in the beginning uh, of uh, preparation for the big uh, celebration can be considered as eye opening and uh, maybe as test run for um, future operations. Thank you, Yulia. Fascinating. Here's what the futurist Dimitris Dimitriadis said about the future of deep fakes. We have now AI and deepfakes. We will have probably new technologies like uh, uh, virtual uh, worlds uh, that are full of misinformation or even hallucinations in augmented reality that someone can hack your glasses and you can see uh, uh, an incident that is fake. And you are misguided and you vote for something that is uh, not your actual feeling. This is very frightening uh, picture, uh, but we know that tomorrow starts today, so we really need to act today. All together, governments, industry, uh, civil society, to ensure that we address uh, the issue of debates now so that uh, the future will look much brighter than this uh, description. Nice one, Yulia. The lesson here? Don't trust any old AI character you find on the internet. Except for you. Oh, you're too kind. Threat actors are active. So are the cybersecurity all-stars. They're in top condition expecting attacks. Hey, did you know that in the days before a cyber attack on the 2018 Winter Games digital infrastructure, malicious activity was spotted? More on that attack and other notable attacks in the next episodes. It's not all fun and games. And it's not all disinformation and deep fakes we need to worry about. We're ready to report on ticket scams, infrastructure attacks, and DDoS attacks on streaming platforms. My team and I will cover this and more over an action-packed couple of months. It's going to be a high-stakes battle of skill, strategy, and endurance. Get ready. Hit subscribe because things are about to go in program. <laughs>